their floor plan for shards. And notice there's a red cross and then it has an upright of blue. And in all the books, they cannot figure out how come this is a different distance than this. And so a lot of them have drawn circles in there and they say this is 28 and this is 56 and, and 7 times 8 is 56 and 6 times whatever. But that's really too much. That's too complex. It's much simpler than that. Okay. All you have to do, and it's not in the books, and the only reason I did it is because I was interested in this. If you take a hexagram, which is a cube, right? You saw how this works into a cube? Everybody saw that? Well, I got it right here. It's easy to show. Here's the hexagram, right? Here's the true triangles. That's root three. Same as I drew here. The same that is here. Here are the triangles here. One here. Well, let me show you here. This is root three. Why is it called formative forces? Because all you have to do is take that form and stretch it up to the top of formative forces and it turns into a perfect cube. That's why it's called formative forces. Because this doesn't happen with root two, but it happens with root three. Okay, so if you take that hexagram and you put it on here, it tells you exactly why there are those two differences. They didn't have to, you don't have to figure anything out. It's right there. They took the cube, the edge of the cube is the blue, and the sides of the blue is the red. So simple. All these people try to make so much complex mathematics out of this. Okay, so let's see what I have uh, on my uh, little clicker. Okay, oh, here it is. All right, now. So it went from uh, the Egyptians and the Byzantines, the Greeks, uh, and then the Gothic, and now we're at Rudolf Steiner's Gertianum. And the reason that I went through these, because those are the major movements of sacred geometry throughout history. Those are the major blocks of real development. Greeks is a big development, okay? And of course the Christian Gothic. And here comes Rudolf Steiner. What he do is he's got the circles again. He's got two circles. Now, if you look at this, I have uh, the bigger circle. This bigger circle right here is the bigger circle, which is the earth. You know that. Four is always the earth. The smaller circle that he used is the moon. So this building is organized around earth and the moon. Now that's interesting. Because that, that hasn't been done before. That's always been uh, squaring the circle in this way and so forth. So I made what he has up there, which is the two circles. This is a little snowman. And these are the correct proportions. What he did was he just separated them. And then he put a building on them underneath. That's the Gertianum. That's the first Gertianum that he designed, which is gone burnt down. Not here anymore. But this is a, a tremendous uh, step in the development of architecture. Um, now what's interesting is that this circle is four and this circle is three, which is seven. When he brought these together, there's a vesica there, but it's not the same vesica as this one because one circle is smaller than the other. <coughs> so this is what really got me because this is what got me started is I went to the Gertianum and I saw this building. I didn't know anything about it. So here's the inside the first one. Yeah, and there are columns, okay, Many, many columns with capitals on top of them. 
Okay, and then there is uh, a connection between them, archiclives, and then I also have uh, forms going on at the bottom. And these are going through a series of seven. So what this is the first one that got me was this, because this shows you one of the forms and how big they are. They're all wood, all the different kind of woods. Shows you the side because of this lady. Now she's up on scaffolding, right? You know, she's way up there, but she's on a scaffolding working on this. This is the one that got me, and that's called Saturn. It's the first one. And when I saw the model of that, which is right here, this is the entrance, working over the entrance, and here they are. It's one here and one here. These are the Saturn capitals. Okay, then the capital move on to others, to seven on this side and seven on this side. Then it goes into the smaller cupola, which is the moon, which has another series of capitals. Now when I say the moon, some people uh, will relate to more that the moon is the etheric. Okay, so uh, it's hard to go into the next step, but uh, the next step here is the Girthianum, shows you these two guys right here. Then the next step is this form, it's sh bell shape. And that bell has been drawn up geometrically perfect. And you know, it's inside all those lines. Okay, I had to figure out what all those lines were. And if you look at it and put it into a sphere, it looks like this. The top part right here, if I told you a circle, see the little circle at the top? There's a circle at the top. Exactly three. I've turned on the bottom. This circle is four. And the outside one is five. In this relationship, this is three, four, and five. This is the first building ever, if it was designed this way, if a building was built like this, that covers both the moon, the sun, and the earth. So, uh, if I don't spin the form, it looks like this in the sphere. And this is what it looks like spinning. This comes from three pentagrams. Now, I've shown you this before, but here it is again. The form, the seven-sided form, comes from three pentagrams. Now, what I want to tell you about this is that uh, this is a seven-sided form. And what I originally was after was equal surfaces perfectly. So if I take the form out of here, this is how it looks. Again, there's a seven-sided form. It comes from three pentagrams. Now, this is the way nature brings it in. Nature brings this form in through three pentagrams. Now, nature is very flexible, and nature is very kind. It has been so kind to me, because so many times it will tell me, yeah, that works pretty good, but maybe there's some better way. And so I'll go back and work on something better, okay? And so what happens is that the human being can bring something beyond nature, because this form isn't perfect. It's a little different. This triangle is a little, a little bigger than this one. So what I had to do is study for about two years and find out how to make it perfect. I now have it perfect. The surface areas are absolutely perfect. And what I happened to do is I had to do this. I had to take a line like this. I couldn't understand why I couldn't get it perfect. It was so close to being perfect, I couldn't understand what is wrong. What am I doing wrong? And what I was doing wrong, I don't know where the eraser went, but what I was doing wrong is I wasn't dividing the line in half. I put all the graphite on one side 
and didn't put it on this side. But when I divided the graphite in half, it became perfect. <laughs> this number I have found three-dimensionally perfect. And this mathematically perfect. So what, what nature gives you, it gives you this flexibility and gives you maybe it's not just right, but we can make it right. And that's what I think is being waited for, uh, for us to do, is not copy nature, but try to improve on it or find out more about it and how it works. And that's the only way I could find this, is by working on it. Okay, so um, I, I, uh, it's, it's, okay. I think that this is the Spirit of the Onman, what they did, what Rita Steiner did, is really a step in evolution of the human being. <coughs> it's a consciousness that we didn't have before. It's based on forms, okay, that we can look at and we can weave in between and we can look at the changing because the forms change. Okay, all the way from the first one to the seventh. It's going through a metamorphosis. Okay, it's changing, it's what's different, it's what's reversing, and it's what's inverting. And that's what Rudolf Steiner found in nature. And he applied it to organic architecture that would show the way this transformed. So you could go in the building and you could go between all these pillars and you could see all of the different things going on in here and how they're transforming. And you can weave in in here and so forth and so on. And then after you have this experience of metamorphosis, you can look through the windows and leave the building. You don't have to go out the door. Well, he felt that the glass windows was a way to get through the wall that was separating us from heaven. Okay, so if you go into the building, there's transformation going on all the time. And the ceiling is a transformation of the human history, showing us how we've gone through our uh, different epochs. And this is showing how organic forms can go through and he felt that these were a way that heaven could speak to us. He considers a building of speech because we could experience this metamorphosis, okay, by weaving in and out of it. It burned down. Well, they built another one but it's different. Okay, so here comes this. Uh, it's so hard for me to really put this in in such a way, but uh, I think the next step, okay, I want to tell you what's new. I think the next step is, is not going into a building and experiencing form, but going into form. That is the building. Instead of having the transformation all around us that we observe from the outside, we have to enter the transformation. We have to be part of the transformation. We can't be just looking from the outside anymore. We have to enter it because that transformation is what's going to transform us. That's how we can transform. So you have to do this transformation in a lawful way. It can't be a bunch of fantasy. Okay, so uh, if you take the seven-sided form, which is what I think is a step in that direction of entering form, entering transformation, entering the spirit so that you are in the speech. You're not in a building that's speaking to you. You're in the speech. You're actually communicating. It's not a, it's not a, a like I go in some of these, these domes in Europe and all around the dome are these people standing like this. And they're looking at you like this and you're going, boy, I, I didn't like those people looking at me, you know. Well, <laughs> So, and that's what they do. You know, it's kind of frightening. But uh, the Gertheon didn't do that. Okay, The Gertheon is not having these people looking at you or whatever. There's form. Remember, form has spirit, not material. Unless it becomes art, then it becomes spirit. So what I see, the new vision of architecture is we have to enter the spirit. Not enter a building that has the spirit, but enter the spirit. So, for instance, um, if you take uh, the seven-sided form, 